Hi AOS fans, uh, it's just me today, uh, Pete sadly is at work, uh, I'm rich, uh, recording this in a, a cheeky uh, time before lunch, before I have to pick up my children. Um, today we're going to do another unboxing, the Blood Bowl boxing was quite popular so we thought we'd try another one. Um, obviously this game uh, is Gangs of Camorra, um, it's a new game, Blood Bowl had a huge following beforehand, but anyway, quite excited about this one. Um, it's uh, Gangs of Camorra, not to be confused with the biblical game uh, Chariots of Gomorrah, uh, but it is a uh, breakneck combat uh, sort of racing shooting game. Breakneck combat in the Dark City uh, featuring Dark Eldar. Don't know a lot about Dark Eldar, quite interested in this, quite like the aesthetic. Uh, my son very much likes the aesthetic, he's very keen to get hold and paint them. Uh, so we're going to have an unboxing and, and see 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 what's inside now uh this is actually take two uh without pete here all sorts of technical mishaps occurred on take one um but just to put i was gonna took the shrink, off, shrink wrap off and everything but uh, unfortunately you won't get to see that bit unless pete put it in at the end but it did have shrink wrap on i promise i do open it i will read you the back of the box uh when i actually put the lid back on upside down so please forgive me uh thrilling high speed battles unfold amongst the spires of the dark city camorra each uh, set of lavish miniatures is comp complemented by its own dynamic gameplay in this breakneck sky hunt where each warrior is the hunter or the quarry or sometimes both at once. Every decision, decision can be the difference between your Dark Eldar gang rising to the top or spiralling into bloody defeat. Fire your engines and prime your guns for in the aerial warfare of Camorra only the fastest survive. Okay, so in the box we, we get uh, six Dark Eldar Reavers 10 Dark Eldar Hellions, uh, terrain pieces, assorted markers, counters and dials, a rule book and some reference cards. Uh, it's for two players and the playtime is approximately 60 minutes and it's uh, complexity level one. Quite interested in this, interested to see how, whether the boys can cope with it. Uh, also interested to see, um, well the Lost Patrol was complexity level one, quite enjoy that one. Uh, and uh, Pete and I were talking the other day after our last AOS video, which isn't up yet, will be up soon. Uh, how much we enjoy playing AOS, uh, but it is when you're trying to fill in a full day parenting or whatever, um, or day at work, it's really hard to squeeze a, a, a game in at the end of the day, especially for recording it, but that's our fault. Uh, we can play that game for three, four hours. Um, Pete didn't get to bed till 2 a.m. Uh, that night and had to get up in the morning. Uh, th this is just an hour, so this sort of game uh, could be a way for us to go, although obviously we do like AOS. Anyway, let's see what's inside. Uh, so there it is, Gangs of Camorra. I shall place that there, hopefully in shot. We'll see. Right, on top here, we have the uh, cardboard inserts. Um, I shall come on to those in a moment. They are uh, double-sided. Um, they're the same on both sides by the looks of things. There's two of those. Uh, and then we have... Uh, a couple of there are a couple of these uh, the uh, instructions on how to put them together usual um, kind of games workshop thing with just some diagrams although there are a few there are a few words as well um, uh, getting started sheet and a quick reference sheet two quick reference sheets presumably one each the rules uh, that's the rules uh, more shrink wrap uh, and then the main event, I guess, uh, for especially a few models out there, are the sprues. Uh, now it does say how many bikes there are of each. I think it was six and ten of each. Uh, there are uh, maybe it wasn't six and ten. There are six of those. And so I'll hold that up. I'll do some close-up photos as well. And there are uh, sort of four of those. Uh, so that's that. And a set of instructions there. And uh, we have a bag of dice, six dice. The house is gradually disappearing under the weight of dice. Um, and the rest is just sort of standard flying, flying bases. So there's not much in the game. Some um, it's gorgeously crafted plastic as usual, very angular as you might expect for the Eldar. Like I said, I don't know much about Eldar and even less about Dark Eldar. Um, but they look like they'll be interesting to put together. Uh, copyright 2010 on those. Uh, notice that's a feature of a lot of Games Workshop games is reusing uh, older older uh, moulds, which I think is an excellent idea for, uh, from their perspective. Um, uh, just uh, build and paint reviews, going right back, but they're for, for a few much younger painters. 
uh, but they go right back to, to pre-2000. So uh, Games Workshop making great use of their IP there, which I think is a really good thing. Uh, right, I'll just um, cut out these. Uh, press these out, you don't need to watch me do that. I'll press these out and then I'll be back and I'll have a look through the walls. Okay, I'm back after pressing out all the cardboard, arguably the best part of any game, pressing out the cardboard bits. Um, and I've assembled the buildings, as you can see in front of me. Um, they all uh, clearly went to the same architect as the people who designed Orthanc and the Barrador. So those are the buildings. Uh, the counters, there's a little dial here, um, which has uh, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 75 degrees on it, which I assume is for swerving in and out of the buildings. There's a uh, scatter template, uh, which has the numbers 1 to 6 in the direction on them. Um, and then there's these little counters here, which you probably can't see there. I should do a close-up shot for you. Uh, they're called the Hunter and the Prey uh, tokens, and, they, and they, they go in together, which I quite like that. That's quite clever. Um, the, um, I've, had, I've had a quick look through the... Uh, um, getting started rules, I'll, I'll just give you a few thoughts on those in a minute, um, but uh, the rule book, uh, pretty standard game workshop rule book, oh, one thing I will say is I've got lots and lots of counters down here, uh, but I didn't get any plastic bags to put them in, as anybody who watches these knows that I do like some plastic bags, so the rule book, um, it's, so it's fairly standard, it's prepar preparing to play at the beginning, and the components, uh, they go into details how to play the game, and then there's the occasional little story in in the middle, uh, in between the pages sections, um, and victory conditions. There's a bit after that how to play of um, how to uh, create a murder pack or a gang, um, and then uh, there's a little bit of painting. The game's workshop, not much on the painting. It's just a page. And there's no um, obvious kind of you know, painting guide with what you paint to buy and things, which is unusual. Um, and then at the back, probably more just a seasoned game as the campaign rules, which looks quite cool. You can create your gang, and then there's a pre-fight sequence, which sort of looks like it uh, puts up a narrative, so there's sort of a fight type and some subplots to do with the game. Uh, and then there's like what you do afterwards, experience points and things like that, uh, and um, and then at the end, very end, there's a roster. So, um, yeah, so that's the rules. It looks pretty simple, as you would expect for a game of Complexity 1. Um, I haven't really looked at the reference cards yet, but the Getting Started rules is basically just a couple of, take you through the basics, you don't even need another person to do this, you could just, you just set it up and play it. Um, looking at it, you make a move, uh, and it looks like you kind of have to move. You, either, you can move between 6 or 18 inches, so you have to keep going. Uh, you are effectively sharks. Uh, you mustn't stop. Um, and you only go in a straight line, but you can execute break turns, it says here. Uh, and that's where this comes in. So it looks like to, to uh, manoeuvre, uh, you your pilot has a, a piloting value and the manoeuvre has a value. So maybe things that are more difficult, maybe a 45 degree turn is easier than a 75 degree turn. And your jet bike has an agility value. And you roll uh, two dice and add your piloting value. And if you get over, uh, sorry, if you get under uh, the manoeuvre value, um, so they go down, I guess, for the more difficult ones. If you go under your manoeuvre value, then you've succeeded. And in the, in the example, in the uh, rules, if you uh, don't succeed your break turn, you smash into one of the buildings. But it says you are allowed to do it again. You don't have to just pack up and go home. Um, okay, uh, attacking um, is usual games workshop fair, I would say. Uh, looks like there's a hit roll and a sort of damage roll. Um, and uh, to hit, you have to uh, roll two dice, and um, if you're in a straight line, you can add things to the score, it says, uh, and you have to exceed the bike, the, the opposing bike's agility value. And if you do, you hit, and then you roll to, to kill, uh, and it looks like, uh, it depends what weapon you've got, they have a kill value, uh, you roll, have to roll over a certain number, and you've killed it, and if you haven't killed it, but you've hit it, then you damage it, and then I think they're easier to kill as the game progresses. So that's pretty simple, that wouldn't take very long to play through. 
Uh, but I haven't got any bikes yet, so I won't do that. Uh, but uh, hopefully I'm going to meet up with Pete in the not too distant future and record uh, a quick game of this. Um, and I'll try, before this video goes out, I'll try and put some of these together and so we can just include some shots of them at the end, probably while I'm talking now. Um, so uh, that, very quickly, is uh, Gangs of Camorra. Um, not to be confused with Pirates of Camorra. Um, and... Um, yeah, so thank you for watching. Um, I hope you stayed right to the end for that terrible pirate joke. And uh, we will see you again soon.